In this video, we're going to learn about segments that are created from two secant lines in a circle. So first let's draw a circle, and then we're going to draw in two secant lines. And remember that a secant line is a line that intersects a circle twice. So we have two secant lines that are intersecting outside the circle right here. And four segments have been created. One, two, three, and four. And there's a relationship between all four of those segments. So if I label the segments A, B, C, and D, the relationship is the length of A times the full length here of A plus B will be the same length as sort of the corresponding situation in the other secant line that the length of C will equal the full length of C plus D. One way to think about this is the length of the outside times the length of the whole thing will equal the length of the outside times the length of the whole thing. So, for example, if we knew that A was 2, B was 8, and C was 3, we could use this relationship to solve for d. So we would plug everything into our equation, and we'd know that 2, the outside length, times 10, which is the whole thing, a plus b, 8 plus 2, equals 3, the outside length, times the whole thing, which would be 3 plus d. So to solve this, we'll multiply 2 times 10 and get 20, and then distribute our 3 to have 9, plus 3d, and then we can just continue to solve this. 11 equals 3d, so d equals 11 thirds. So if you knew any three of these segments, you could use this relationship here in order to solve for the fourth segment. So it's important to have at least a basic understanding of why this formula works. So we're going to look at this picture again, and again label in our sides with A, B, C, and D. But this time I'm going to add in two extra segments in order to create two triangles that are sort of overlapping in some parts. Okay, so these two triangles are similar, and we can show that by looking for congruent angles. First of all, what triangles am I talking about? I'm talking about this triangle and this triangle. Okay, so the first thing you should notice is that both triangles share this angle. So that's one angle that the triangles have that's congruent because it's the same angle in each. Now another angle that they have that's congruent is this angle with this angle. And that's because each of those angles intercept the same arc right here. They're both inscribed angles of that arc, so they have to be congruent. So that means that these two triangles must be similar, which means that their corresponding sides are proportional. So we can set up an equation that shows ratios that have to be equal to each other. So if we look at the green triangle, we know that side A divided by side C plus D, so that's this full side right here, would have to be the same ratio as in the yellow triangle, C, which is that outside part that's corresponding to side A, over the full side of A plus B. So notice that A and C are corresponding, so they match up, and C plus D and A plus B are also corresponding. Now, if we rewrite this equation by cross-multiplying, we'll get back to our formula from up there that's highlighted in green. So if we cross-multiply, we get A times A plus B equals C times C plus D which is exactly the same formula as before. So again, it's good to have at least a little bit of an understanding for where this formula comes from and also be able to apply it. 
where it comes from is similar triangles and the fact that similar triangles produce proportional equations.